In how many ways can a circle and a straight line lie on a plane? One way would be like this, where they don't meet at all. Another way is like this, where they meet at exactly one point. Such lines are called tangents. A line which meets a circle at exactly one point is called a tangent. And the third way in which it can meet the circle is like this, at two points. It's called a secant. One point, tangent, and two points, secant. Tangents have one very important property. Let this be a circle and this a tangent to it. The radius to the point where the circle and the tangent meet will always be perpendicular to the tangent. So OA will be perpendicular to this tangent. No matter where the tangent is drawn, the radius to the point where it meets the circle will always be perpendicular to it. There's another interesting concept about tangents. Take a circle and an external point P. How many tangents can be drawn from this point to the circle? We can draw one tangent like this and another one like this. Two tangents can be drawn from an external point to a circle. The interesting part is that both these will be equal in length. Tangents drawn from an external point to a circle will be equal in length. If the two points at which the tangents meet the circle are called A and B, then we can be sure that PA will be equal to PB in length. And if we draw the radii OA and OB, then we can be sure that OA will be perpendicular to tangent PA and OB will be perpendicular to tangent PB. Okay, so now we are ready to apply the concepts we have learnt about tangents and circles. Try solving this problem. So the first thing we are given is that PA and PB are tangents to this circle. We are also told that the circumference of this circle is 12 centimeters, and the two tangents form a 60 degree angle between them. How do we find the length of arc ACB? This is fun. How can we find the length of this arc? Okay, let's ask ourselves another question. What do we need to find the length of this arc? An arc is simply a part of the circumference, so we need the circumference and we are given that. And the length of the arc also depends on the central angle it subtends. So if we draw radii OA and OB, we get angle AOB as the central angle of this arc. But we need the measure of this angle and we haven't been given that. Can we find that though? Let's see. We know that the radii to the points where the tangents meet the circle are always perpendicular to the tangents. So both these angles will be right angles. Now look at quadrilateral PAOB, this kite-like quadrilateral. Out of the four angles, three are known to us and we can easily find the fourth one. With respect to this quadrilateral, we can say that 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle AOB will equal 360 degrees. This gives us the measure of angle AOB as 120 degrees. Now we have everything we need to calculate the length of the arc. If the central angle is theta, we know that the length of arc ACB will be theta over 360 degrees times the circumference which is 12. We substitute 120 in place of theta and get the length of arc ACB as 4 centimeters. That's the challenge we face in competitive exams. You may not be tested on just one concept. Here we applied quite a few. Sum of angles of a quadrilateral, length of the arc formula and the concept of radii perpendicular to the tangents.